So as part of someone who has spent the last 10 years or so watching Call of Duty Esports evolve and develop, I'm well involved in knowing what all the storylines are, the character backgrounds, so on and so forth. One of the things that causes is for me to get a little bit blinkered. I start to think that people know things that are common base knowledge, at least in my mind anyway, and I seem to forget that there's a group of people out there who want to get into Call of Duty Esports, but they just don't really know how. They don't know which teams to support. They're not fully aware of how things work, when the events take place. And a lot of you guys reached out to me over these past couple of videos. For that, I am very grateful. And I will dedicate these next couple of videos into answering the questions. So the first one that I got asked a lot was indeed, who should I support in the Call of Duty League? Now I'm gonna break it into five different categories to hopefully help you choose your team for the coming Call of Duty season. First one, the obvious one, is basing it on location. If you want to choose your team based on who's nearest to you, then I can give you the 12 locations, well actually 11, because two of them share one city that are here in Call of Duty League. If you're from Europe, then you're looking at either London or Paris. Those are your two with rumored expansions in the future, possibly into Spain. In Canada, we have Toronto. When it comes to America, we have Chicago, Minnesota, Dallas, Seattle, Atlanta, two from Los Angeles, one from New York, and one from Florida. The next thing that you can do is look at who the best teams are. Now, last season, it was a case of Dallas, Atlanta and Chicago being your top three teams. Dallas Empire winning the champs, winning the Super Bowl of Call of Duty, whilst Atlanta were the best team in the league format. Chicago were third in both of those, so that's your top three to consider. However, one thing that you need to know is that we are moving this season from 5v5 to 4v4. We used to be 4v4, and then it moved two years ago, and now it's going back. Basically, that throws up a lot of question marks because not only are you cutting the amount of pro players in the league and therefore every team automatically becomes stronger because there's much more competition for places. These are going to be some extremely tight series and games and very, very hard to predict. Any leeway from any team, any slacking off will be instantly punished and it's going to be hard to be a consistent top team when the competition is this high. Therefore, I'd like to throw in a couple of other teams that you might want to consider that could be good over the coming season. And they are LA Thieves, New York Subliners, Seattle Surge. All those teams are ones that everyone considers to be kind of just under that top three. It's, it's very early in the season. It's hard to predict, but early on, currently on paper, those are the three that follow the top three and maybe worth your consideration. The next category that I thought people might want to join a team based on is one that already has an established fan base. A lot of these teams, a lot of the owners, a lot of these players already have established support and that is carried through into franchising. And the one that you're going to look at is Chicago. Chicago have two of the biggest name players on their roster to ever exist in Scump and Formal, as well as being owned by one of the people who's seen as almost a grandfather of the entire scene in Hex. They've always had a monumental amount of support, they've always made a lot of content, there's an insane amount of storylines there that we can go through in the future, and they have the biggest fan base. They didn't have it last season because they lost the Optic brand, which was bought by someone else, and then they bought it in the summer. So now, not only did they do they have that the old green wall Optic fan base coming to them, but anyone who was already there whilst they were called the Chicago Huntsman now also supports them. So they have a massive, massive fan base. However, after that, you're probably talking London or your next best supported team purely because UK esports very passionate, European esports, a lot of people have floated towards London, London have been the biggest European team. And in America, all the rest of the supporters are split pretty evenly. So if you want to go with a very big supported fan base group, you're talking probably Chicago or London. The next thing that you should consider if you're looking to pick your Call of Duty team are the people who play for the teams. Now, this one I will not be able to answer for you. And what I would highly recommend is you go on a follow spree. You follow a lot of pro players, go onto Twitter, hit follow on a pro player, and it will give you a list of three, four, five other pro players that you could follow. And you just keep following that chain cycle, basically. Follow all the pro players or put them on view lists where you can see like Call of Duty news all the time and find the ones that you like. For example, Scump and Formal, they have massive fan bases. Crimzix, Clayster, these guys have been around for years and years and years. Octane is considered a really funny individual in the league and a lot of people love his content and love him and support his team because of it. Same with uh, Methods in the scene. There's a lot of people in the scene. In Europe, everyone loves the 
twins, being worse skins and scraps. This one's on you. You're gonna have to go and follow their Twitters, follow their Twitches, follow their YouTubes, and just try and spend a bit of time in each of their streams and see if you like them. Do you like the person? Do you like who it is who you're trying to support? If so, then, you know, people like me, I support my main team, but I also like individual players, so I will keep an eye out and support their team as long as they're not playing against my team, if you get what I'm saying. And the last one is the coolest team. Now, this is what I got asked a bit when people would say to me, oh, who's the coolest team? Who should I support? I kind of struggled to break this one down. I'm not sure exactly what cool means to you. So what I've done is I've kind of tried to settle on the idea of it being the best branding or the best owners or the best content. For that, I'm going to throw a couple of teams into the mix. The first team that I'm going to throw into the mix, and the one that I recommend based on all of these on the coolest factor, is your LA Thieves. Now, there's a storied history here with 100 Thieves who have bought the team this summer. They used to be a Call of Duty team. They are really good when it comes to branding, merchandise, content, fan support, connecting their fans. They have a good fan base. They weren't in the league last year. They have a really good team. They also have a lot of history in the sense of the owner of 100 Thieves, Nade Shot, being an ex-professional player who won championships, was alongside Scump back in the old Optic days when the Call of Duty esports scene was first forming. So there's a lot of love and history there. And again, they are a really cool brand. They make really good merch drops that sell out in seconds. They focus very, very heavily on their content. And you can guarantee that if you're looking to follow your team's success, that LA Thieves will put together a video blog type deal throughout the season so that you can follow exactly what's going on behind the scenes, exactly how everyone feels. Other ones for you to consider are Chicago. Again, that optic brand, the massive fan base. These again are people who know how to make fantastic productions around their teams and players so you can connect with them better there. And as well, Dallas. Dallas are owned by the Envy group who have been a part of Call of Duty history forever. They won champs last season. They do an amazing job of not only showing how much they care about their fans, but their players and showing them off to the world. But again, this one comes down to your own view. I would go and follow a lot of the pro team accounts. I would go and follow the YouTube, check out the different contents that they've made and draw your own conclusions. That's everything for me on this video, guys. I hope I helped. A lot of you guys reached out and said, well, I do want to get into the Call of Duty scene, but I don't know who to support. I know how that feels, having tried to get into the likes of other sports that I've never really taken a shine to, and I'm hoping that this video has given you that. Until next one, all the best, guys. Take care.